It's been a great homecoming for the road-weary Atlanta Braves. The fun began on Friday night with Justin Hupton providing the heroics. High fly ball! Saturday, it was El Oso Blanco's turn. The legend of Evan Gaddis grew in Atlanta. High fly ball, left field line. Gaddis has put the Braves in front. The home crowd has been treated to two great moments in the past two games against the Dodgers. But now it's Sunday and time for a sweep. What's in store in game three today in Atlanta? We'll find out in a moment. Well, the rain has finally left Atlanta, and it's just about time for baseball. The Braves and Dodgers wrapping up our three-game series here at Turner Field. Atlanta with a chance for a three-game sweep with Joe Simpson and Dale Murphy. Chip Carey back with you here at Turner Field. And the starting assignment today, Murph goes to Mike Miner, who's the subject of today's Wendy's Now That's Better feature. Absolutely, Chip. Uh, in, in the That's Better category, notice his ERA has been cut dramatically exactly in half, and notice his base on balls per nine-inning pitch from 3.1 to 2.3. That's great, no walks, but that's also an indication, even on the other at bats that he's that he has, that he's got better command, uh, and just making a lot fewer mistakes, Joe. His last two starts about as good as it gets, Dale, and especially when you think about where he pitched in these two games. This first video is from Great American Ballpark against a good hitting Reds team, and in a band box of a ballpark, he was outstanding. And then the next start came in Arizona, also a good hitting ballpark. All told, 13 and two-thirds innings. He just allowed two runs, and both of those runs were solo homers, one in each game, and uh, good good numbers. Four walks, 11 strikeouts, so he's on a good roll. And chopping at the bit after an hour and 40-minute rain delay, Miner and the Braves now take the field on a Sunday afternoon at home. And they're taking on a Dodgers ball club that's been racked by injuries all season, but they're starting to get healthy, and they get another component of their lineup back today. And Mark Ellis, who was working on a rehab assignment at Chattanooga, he was activated before today's game, wasn't expected to play until tomorrow, but they need to get him in the lineup and get this Dodger offense going. He'll bat behind Carl Crawford and in front of Matt Kemp. Adrian Gonzalez is at first base. The other Ellis, A.J., is their catcher batting fifth. Scott Van Slyke hit a couple of home runs here the other day. Juan Uribe will make his first appearance in the series. Nick Punto's playing three different positions for the Dodgers here in Atlanta. And uh, Mr. McGill, the youngster, gets his first start against the Braves, and that's their Toyota starting lineup. Mike Miner, 25 years old, 6'4", 205 out of Chapel Hill, Tennessee, makes his ninth start. His last six home starts, outstanding. 4-1 with a 136 here at Turner Field. Six quality starts in those six outings as well. Uh, lifetime against the Dodgers. Three starts, but he does not have a win, although he's pitched well. He's 0 and 1 with a 237 ERA. His four keys to pitching success missing barrels. He's been doing a great job of that, working both sides of the plate. He's really cut down on his homers. Uh, as I said, only two runs allowed in his last two starts. Those were solo homers each. And good D behind him. Because he's cut down on his walks, I think the defense has been a little sharper behind him. Everybody on their toes. And when the ball is put in play, they've been making some outstanding defensive plays behind him. And speaking of the Braves defense, here's how Freddie Gonzalez lines them up today. An off day for B.J. Upton. Jordan Schaefer gets the start in center field. He'll be flanked by Justin in left, Jason in right. Juan Francisco starts at the hot corner. Ramiro Pena in for Dan Ugla at second base. And how about Brian McCann? The Braves talked at the end of the road trip, Joe, about upping his workload. This is Brian's fourth consecutive start. And he's up to it. He feels good. He's swinging good. He's been uh, shut out in this series hit wise, but he's swinging it good and got robbed a couple of times, too. Here's your umpiring crew for game three of the series. Alan Porter will have the plate. Greg Gibson. Hunter Wendelstedt. And Jerry Lane on the bases. 
We're underway. A swing and a miss by Carl Crawford. And a line drive to left. Upton can't get there. It's past him and into the left field corner. Crawford, a stutter step around the first base bag, stops at second. And he's aboard with a leadoff double. I have to see it again, Joe. I thought I thought Justin had a beat on that one. Looked like right at the end. He lost, lost it. Yeah, he that was lost track of it or something right at the end. But from the get go, it looked like he had a, had a beat on it. The lights are not on, so it wasn't lights. Carl Crawford almost missing first, watching to see what Justin Upton did. That was that stutter stutter step. Chip. A little bit of a break. He might have been at third base. Yes, had you're he not right. Stumbled around you're first. You're right. So here's Mark Ellis, the Dodgers second baseman. And Miner pumps a quick strike. Ellis does his job. He gets Crawford to third base with a ground ball to second. Productive out. And here's Matt Kemp. Yeah, nice piece of hitting there. You know, uh, it might have been as the ball as Justin was going for that ball. Joe, might have, as it got lower, might have got into the, the the seats a little bit. On day games, it, the ball does kind of blend in with the the background and all the the, the different. Predominantly light colored shirts in the in the stands uh, because uh, it did look at the last minute like he lost it. So Ellis whose last game in the big leagues was April 26th already makes his presence felt. And Matt Kemp an RBI chance with Crawford at third and one out in the first. Miner gave up a run in the first inning of his last start at Arizona home run to Paul Goldschmidt but didn't allow anything after that. We're up to 10 games in a row where the other team has scored first. Let's see if Miner can keep him off the scoreboard here in the opening inning. Kemp at 266, a homer, 15 RBIs. For his last 22 at Turner Field. The Braves stopped his 14 game hitting streak on Friday night with Kemp an 0 for 5 game. Over for 4 last night. Miner pumps the outside corner, 2 and 2. I think last year was Alan Porter's first full year in the big leagues as a non rookie umpire. And I remember him doing some games the Braves were playing, and he did a great job behind the plate. And Kemp swings and misses. Kemp was ahead 2 0. Oh. Miner came back and struck him out, and Crawford still at third, now two down. Like a breaking ball, but like more like a curveball that he took a little off. Yeah, yeah, more like a curveball than that that hard slider down and in. He's got really good mound presence as he's matured. Not afraid to go after guys. Good sequence there coming back after being behind a Matt Camp 2-0. Now Adrian Gonzalez, the Dodger first baseman. Four home runs, 27 knocked in for Gonzalez. His batting average, 331 for the year. And a base hit with two outs. 
So Crawford scores. Gonzalez picks up his 28th RBI, and the Dodgers lead 1-0. Try and go through Kemp and Gonzalez with a runner at third and leave that runner at third base. You've done some super pitching. But Gonzalez not going to let that opportunity go by even with two outs. Good swing. L.A. strikes first. Here's A.J. Ellis, the catcher. And it's in at the knees. Ellis started here on Friday night, doubled, walked, and scored twice. Tim Federovitz started game two for the Dodgers, and he was the men's man sent out to make room for Mark Ellis on the Los Angeles roster. Popped up. Freddie Freeman near the camera well. Don't have a play. And the count stays 0 and 2. That's Don Mattingly, the Dodgers skipper. It's been a rough start for Los Angeles. A team that spent lavishly last year in acquiring some big ticket players from Boston. They were the sexy pick to run away with the West. Hasn't worked out that way. As Ellis drives one toward left, Upton got a late jump but gets there in time. And that'll retire the side. A run on two hits. Adrian Gonzalez, a two out single, gives Los Angeles a 1 0 lead after a half inning. Here's the Braves Toyota starting lineup. Gonzalez has Jordan Schaefer leading off in center. Hayward, Upton, and Freddie Freeman join him in the top four. Then it's the Iron Man, Brian McCann, behind the plate. Simmons, Francisco, Pena, and Mike Mike. Our first look at Matt McGill, 23 years old, 6'3, 210, out of Simi Valley, California. He's made three starts, but no record so far. A 692 ERA. His last two starts. The Giants and the Marlins, six and a third innings, nine hits, eight runs, eight walks, and four strikeouts. He was a 31st round pick in 2008 by the Dodgers out of high school in Simi Valley. Throws fairly hard. His fastball is in the low 90s. He's also got a slider. He must have good command and get ahead in the count with his fastball. And the sliders to left handed hitters. That's a question mark. He doesn't really have that back foot slider. The slider he likes to throw is to right handed hitters and make them chase away, but not too many righties in the lineup today. And he's promptly falling behind Jordan Schaefer. Two balls, no strikes. 
When Jordan Schaefer starts, he has a very good day usually. He's been very patient with his playing time situation. And when Jason Hayward was out, Schaefer did a terrific job playing in right field in his absence. His average up to 302 for the year. I really like how Jordan's kind of rebounded from a challenging year last year in Houston and, and being let go here and and uh, I just like the way he's worked the way he's approached BP every at bat. Got a fastball three and one and missed it now it's a full count pitch. And a sixth pitch in this at bat. Strikes him out. There was that slider. Yeah, it's a good pitch. And Jordan is out number one. Wow. I don't know. Ball really sailed. Yeah, yeah that was fastball, almost like a, a cut of the way Jordan yeah. swung at it over the top of it. I thought it was a slider. But yeah, too. And, and I think the way Jordan looked back, he thought the catcher might have missed it. He mm -hmm. thought it moved so much. Kind of surprised him a little bit. Ball moved. That's high to Jason Hayward. A ball no strikes. Jason 0 for 4 last night, but was robbed of a home run by Matt Kemp, you recall. And then came off the disabled list on Friday night with a couple of hits, two runs, and an RBI single. The Braves 8 5 win. Two and two. It's been speculated in the Los Angeles newspapers and on some of the Dodger blogs that McGill may be pitching for his spot in the Dodgers rotation. Ted Lilly is getting close to returning for LA. Another part of the scouting report on this guy was that he can and will pitch up in the zone and get away with it. Got Jason to swing and miss up high, went a little higher, and he laid off. And that one too far inside. Hayward patient. Hoaxes a base on balls with one out. And here's Justin Upton. Talking about some of the struggles LA has been having. Who would have thought they'd, they'd be trying to avoid their fourth sweep of the season already today? That's, uh, that's remarkable. They've been banged up. They've used the yeah. DL 15 times this year. And nine different starting pitchers for the Dodgers. That's tough to overcome. Way outside to Upton. One ball, no strikes. Slider. One of the things his pitching coach told me about him was that he really does drive it to the plate and finish his pitches. And as a result, on his fastball, sometimes he'll get a little hop on that fastball when it's down. Rick Cunningham, the pitching coach, of course. So, what's tougher to gauge, fellas, velocity or movement? Well, it challenge, movement. Yeah, definitely movement. Definitely movement. I always used to come back to the dugout, say, "Yeah, he's throwing hard, but it's straight." Everybody's like, "Oh, okay." Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> as long as it's straight. Movement, even if the pitch is a bad location, you still got a chance with some movement. That's high. Two balls, two strikes.
That slider had a little too much of the plate and got away with one. Ooh, yes. Field was covered during the rain delay. The infield that is. Don't know how fast the track is though after. Tarp was down. Sometimes that holds a lot of moisture too underneath. And so question is. Slippery track perhaps do you send Jason Hayward here with Upton up and Freeman on deck. Well I would but yeah. I'm always kind of too. Like to send guys. Let's see what Hayward does. Big lead. He is going. And the pitch swing and a miss. The throw to second is going to be in plenty of time. Can I change my mind? No. <laughs> no do overs, Murph. As we head to the second inning, strike him out, throw him out. Twin killing ends the Atlanta first inning. Part by AT&T Ubers, by Delta Airlines, and by Ford. Dodgers score first in the first, and Mike Miner back to work. He'll face Scott Van Slyke, the Dodgers right fielder today. Right before we sent you to that last little portion of the Chipper Jones driven feature, it was. Van Slyke, who is napping on the outfield grass. Not sure if the Van Slykes are related to the Van Winkles. <laughs> but we know Scott can rip because he has hit a couple of home runs in this series. He was their minor league player of the year in 2011 at Double A Chattanooga. He had 348. With 45 doubles, 20 homers, and 92 RBIs in 130 games. What a year. Mike misses full count.
Sleeping or meditating? What do you think? <laughs> Contemplating that strikeout. There you go. <laughs> Miner gets the first out, his second strikeout of the game. As a youngster, I grew up in St. Louis, and his dad was one of my favorite players to watch. Just the way Andy Vance like played the game. I hope Scott has the same kind of career. And he went about his business the right way too. always played hard always hustled. Here's our first look at Juan Uribe in the series for Los Angeles. He's got the start at third. A couple of homers seven RBIs. Late swing. This is Uribe's third season with the Dodgers. It'll be his 13th overall in the big leagues. He's been with the Rockies, the White Sox, the Giants, and now Los Angeles. And he can tomahawk a high fastball. And back to the screen. One ball, two strikes. Good fastball hitter, but he is especially good at getting up on top of letter high fastballs. He's played in a couple World Series, did it with the White Sox in 2005 when they beat Houston, and in 2010 when the Giants took care of Texas. He had, a, he had good numbers in that postseason, didn't he, in 2010? 2010, two homers. Nine RBIs in 14 games collectively in the postseason. And Miner just struck him out with something off speed. Back to back whiff starts inning two for Miner. Well, Great really change. nice change right there. Here we see it again. Great location. Nice movement. Starts more confidence. Yeah, he started mixing that pitch in there with his fastball and breaking stuff. And Joe, you've said it a couple of times about Miner. He can give up an early home run and put that behind him. Wouldn't know he gave up a first inning run the way he's gone after him in this inning. Yeah, he's been real good at uh, putting stretches together after a home run. You know, 10 out of 12, 14 in a row, something like that. He, he's really good at. Moving on. That was not the case when he first came up. And that's that's a good way to put it, Joe. Uh, he's really good at moving on. That is one of the toughest things for a young pitcher to learn. You know, giving up a home run or a, a hit on a mistake, just worrying about it too much. Well, he's even the count to Nick Punto, batting eighth today for Los Angeles. He's hitting 500 this year as a right hand batter. He's 13 for 26 coming into today's play. So, a real test for Mike today. This is kind of what he did to Medlin last night. And ran Chris's pitch count up there in the seventh inning. That eventually caused Chris to have to come out of the game. And wound up with a walk. It's not just Punto it's the rest of his teammates too that are doing some damage against left handed pitching. The odd part. With this batting average, which leads the major leagues for teams against lefties, is that they are only six and eight against left handed starters. Hard to figure. But that was our Academy Sports and Outdoor leaderboard. Ball.
balls, two strikes. And Miner loses Punto. Good at bat out of the eighth spot. That'll clear McGill in the second inning. First walk for Miner today. McGill 0 for 2. And takes a little low. One ball, no strikes. One strike away from bringing his offense to the plate. And the rain begins to fall again at the ballpark. As McGill swings and misses. Miner strikes out three in the second inning. Strands Punto at first. Freddie Freeman to work for the Braves down an early run at home. home run that brought the Braves from behind in game two of the series and for more on this amazing Evan Gattis story let's check in with Elizabeth Morrow guys thank you I'm convinced every time I fill in for Tom it starts pouring but I talked to Evan Gattis this morning about that eighth inning game winning home run and when we were talking at the same time the highlight was being shown for the first time he got to see it guys I asked him if any of this has sunk in he said not one bit. He said, I come every day prepared to try to contribute what and where I can. That's exactly what he has done for this Braves team. Let's take a look at our lows. Never stop improving gra graphic. Gaddis leads all rookies in home runs and in the RBI category with 22. Out of 116 at-bats he has, six of his eight homers have given the Braves the lead. Not too bad. And this six-game winning RBI is tied for third. Thank you, Elizabeth. Great report. And yes, indeed, it is a, an amazing story. It just continues for Evan Caddis, whose playing time has dwindled to pinch hitting. He's, get, he's getting fans all over the country, too. People who are, as his legend grows, people are really tuned in to watch him hit when he does come up, even as a pinch hitter. He's getting fans all over Twitter, Joe. You should get on there and find out about those fans. I've heard about that. Or as Chipper would call it, the Twitter. No, it, every time you talk about him, you always say, what an amazing story. What else can you say? It is it's so much fun. And Freddie Gonzalez, I think, has done a terrific job of divvying out playing time for Gaddis and Gerald Laird. And the reason it's 
you want to use the term a struggle, it's because Brian McCann is back and healthy and, for example, today playing in his fourth straight game. Talked to Evan before the game, and he said that he just loves that situation that he was in last night. Loved the crowd, loved the fact that they were into it so much. As McCann strikes out, that's out number two. Thought it was great, too, that Reed Johnson and Justin Upton were on the top rail of a dugout giving some pointers to Evan Gaddis. That whole sequence was good, you know, see that happen. And for Evan to say that, I said to him, you know, it was almost, uh, I mean, Justin was eye to eye with you, very calm as he was describing some things to you. And he said, yeah, very businesslike. But he said, you'll see a lot of cutters. And the one you want is the one that he throws at you because that's going to come right back to the middle of the plate. And that's, lo and behold, what exactly what happened. You know, getting that scout report and then going out and doing it. Yeah. I mean, it's coming in 95 miles an hour. <laughs> and it just was it, it, the, the whole, the, like you say, the whole sequence, the whole night. Again, the whole, the whole thing he's going through and what he's giving the fans here and in baseball. Like you said, Joe, people are loving to watch his, uh, his story unfold. Broken bat and too late at first. Anderson Simmons has an infield hit. Not much Ellis could do about that. I loved what a scout said to me this morning. Sal Butera, who, who was here advancing the Braves for the Blue Jays, he was talking as you watch Anderson hustle this one out. He said, in our game, rarely does the expectation or the, the actual event measure up to the anticipation and expectation of what might happen. And last night, the fans were on their feet. They're going crazy. The tying run at first. And Evan Gaddis comes through, and he said, when that happens, that's when our game is really special. And I thought that was a great way of putting it. So Juan Francisco with two outs. Juan batting seventh for the Braves today. And looks up and away at ball one. Wind blowing straight in. Light shower at the ballpark. The sun's trying to peek through. And that wind just started, though. It had calmed down when the rain quit. And ball too low. Well, Evan, Evan Gaddis's mental approach, his mental maturity, his calmness he has out there is just remarkable. Remarkable to me. With his lack of experience, he just seems so confident and in, and in control. That ball's hammered down the right field line, but foul. Mercy. The second deck. Yes. <laughs> I was just about to say, did that go where I thought I saw it go? We talked about this some out in Arizona, Dale, about how Juan Francisco can hit it as far or farther than most, but that. That's what he wants to do every swing. And there are times where that swing is not the one that's called for. But there's no questioning his power. Two balls, one strike. And McGill drops in a breaking ball for an even count. No, you're, you're, you're right. There are times when it comes for a different kind of swing. You can't completely change who you are as a hitter, but there are times when you got to make some kind of an adjustment. Like Justin Upton did the other night with a ground ball to second base, gets an RBI and a guy to third. Swing and a miss. And that retires the side. McGill has struck out four. He's got a live arm and he leads one nothing after two.
friends, the SEC Baseball Tournament starts Tuesday on Fox Sports South. Don't miss all the action live from Hoover, Alabama, as top teams square off for the conference title. All the fun of the SEC Baseball Tourney starts Tuesday at 10.30 a.m. on Fox Sports South. SEC Tournament, ACC Tournament, always good baseball. That's for sure. We always talk about it, SEC football, but the, those baseball programs and the crowds they draw, boy. Great baseball. And there's a product of the SEC, Vanderbilt's Mike Miner. It goes after Carl Crawford here in the third inning. Crawford doubled and scored on a Gonzalez base hit with two outs. That's inside ball two. Well, I love I love uh, Mike Miner's mound president. Presence. I love the way his pace. You, you mentioned Joe earlier about the defense behind you. You got to throw strikes. Keep that defense ready. Wow. What was that one? Yeah. Also the pace. You know you, you don't don't lollygag out there. Get on the mound. Get your sign. Let it go. And he loses a fast man. And Carl Crawford is on base for the second time. I thought he had him struck out the pitch before that. Crawford a threat to run. He's eight for ten in stolen bases. Big league high was 60 back in 2009 with Tampa Bay. And a strike to Ellis. Ellis had a quadriceps problem. He was rehabbing at double A Chattanooga. And the plan for the Dodgers was to get him in town today and perhaps join the 25 man roster in Milwaukee tomorrow. They need a win. They need a spark to their offense. So Ellis activated before today's game. And he was playing so well, hitting so well before he got hurt. It's been a big hole in their lineup since he left. Matt Kemp batted second last night, didn't he? Yep, just for the second time this year. This deepens their lineup too by having him come back to the two spot. But they're still without Jerry Hairston and maybe more importantly, Hanley Ramirez has a hamstring problem. One ball, two strikes, one nothing. Dodger lead in the top of the third inning. Game started late, an hour and 40 something minute rain delay today. And a swing and a miss. Miner strikes out Ellis. And Mike has the strikeout ball working. That's number five in the game. Kemp was the first man Miner struck out. And that was a big strikeout at the moment. There was a runner at third and one out. 
But Gonzalez followed with a two out hit to drive in the only run of the game. Strike one. Kemp's got that pine tar way up that bat. It's all over his jersey, too. Too bad Tim McClellan's not here. One ball, one strike. <laughs> yeah. Kemp hits a top spin rocket into left field, and that'll rattle off the fence. Crawford on his way to third is going to stop. Matt Kemp's first hit of the series is a ringing double and the Dodgers in business second and third with one out. Crawford bluffed like he was going to steal on that pitch if he had been going he would have scored here but. Boy a nice piece of hitting by Kemp on a fastball up and in. Yeah it was best best swing by far of the series here. Bluff by by Crawford there. The, Good time to go out and appeal the fact that his pine tar is too up high on his battery. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Yeah. That's always been a fun one. So here's Gonzalez. And he jumps on the first pitch and drives that toward left center field. Jordan Schaefer going back is going to have room. And the catch is made. Tagging is Crawford. He will score. Kemp moves up. And Gonzalez puts the ball in play and has a two RBI afternoon. It's two nothing Dodgers. When you're struggling to get wins, it sure does pay to do little things right. So far today, the Dodgers have done really three things that are considered clutch, and that is Ellis getting the runner over to third in the first inning. Gonzalez coming through with a two out base hit to drive in a run and now a sacrifice fly. Miners spun out of that delivery and missed low. One ball, no strikes for A.J. Ellis. Has good numbers against him. Even after his flyout, he's still four for eight with a homer against Mike. And now he's in the driver's seat. Three balls and a strike. Van Slyke is on deck. Single runs in the first and here in the third for Los Angeles. Crawford scored them both. Fly foul our way, full count. Hey, that ball Gonzalez hit, hit it pretty solid. Maybe that wind held it up a little bit, kept it in the ballpark. That's a good point because it's really blowing in hard right in our faces. And Ellis tries to tame the wind. He drives that one deep. Schaefer, though, is going to have room. And you're right, Joe. The wind helped Mike Miner a couple of times in the third inning. Dodgers get a leadoff walk and score it. Two nothing to score after two and a half.
Seven straight opponents that have put the first runs on the board head to head with the Braves. Braves haven't been all the way through the order yet against Matt McGill. His numbers pretty good against teams first time through the order. A batting average of just 182 after that it gets a little rougher for him. So hopefully the Braves will be able to figure him out a little better next time through. Eight, nine, and one for the Braves lineup card in the third inning. Ramiro Pena is the man starting things off. Pena has a triple in the series. And another guy that, when given a chance to play, has really played very well for Atlanta. Especially against right handers. On our Georgia lottery hitting the jackpot 359 average against right handers playing great at home. And when he does start. He's putting in some numbers there too. A cue shot back to the mound. And Pena is out number one. Why the Dodgers can't complain at all about what McGill has given them. No strikeouts in his first two and a third innings. He's allowed just one hit and one walk, and he leads by two. Miner hits it sharply. Funny hop. A nice play out there by Punto to stay with it. Two outs. We go back to the top of the order. Jordan Schaefer. All your long Braves baseball on Fox Sports South is being presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The right stuff, the low price every day. So the Braves have gone through the lineup once against McGill. I would imagine, fellas, the word's going around. What's he got? What's he doing? Let's see if Atlanta has better luck. What kind of tilt to his breaking ball? Yeah, but we'll have to see. I haven't really seen too many off speed pitches. No, everything's been pretty hard. You're pretty, right. Pretty hard, and that might be part of his challenge was going through the lineup two or three times at, at the second or third time, unless he's he's gonna come up with something a little bit more of a variation off his fastball. He's thrown some hard sliders and some hard cutters, but nothing really that I've seen off speed, true off speed. A 10 mile an hour right. difference. I haven't seen that. There was some. Mm -hmm. You asked and he <laughs> delivered. <laughs> and there it was. It was 78 miles an hour. That's a that's a pretty good difference. Runs the ball up pretty good. It looks like he kind of gets under it a little bit. Likes to push the ball a little bit. Leads with that elbow. That's what helps him throw the ball up in the zone. Kind of get a, a, a tough read as a as a hitter when they they push it. Billy Wagner did that a little bit. I think even Craig Kimball does a little bit. Of course, he's throwing 98, so it wouldn't really matter. That same pitch kind of ran in on Schaefer the first yeah, time up. Yeah, that struck him out that first time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It would seem too, guys. This guy's just wild enough to make you feel uncomfortable up there. Yeah, you don't have any trust yet that he's got a good idea what he's trying to do or where he's trying to throw it. Even if you're pretty confident that you're going to see a fastball, you know that he knows he doesn't quite know if it's going to go in or out. And how about Schaefer? He draws a two out walk and that'll bring up Jason Hayward who with one swing could tie the game. Yeah you can be effectively wild uh, I think the first time you see somebody but a second or third time you kind of have a, a better idea and some of those effectively wild pitches end up being mistakes that are hittable. 
Have to see if it comes to pass here. Well, he has been wild. He came in with 10 walks in 13 innings this year. He's got two walks, four strikeouts, and two and two thirds today. And now the Suns try to peek through at the ballpark. Well, that's a good omen for Jason. McGill's numbers at Albuquerque were pretty decent. ERA wise, ERA wise, 2.84 and four starts, but all told, big leagues and AAA seven starts and no decision yet. But he made his debut in the big leagues against Milwaukee April 27th. Pitched a great game, seven strikeouts and two earned runs over six and two thirds innings. But the Dodgers bullpen blew the save. Matt Guerrero gave up two homers. And that's been a common theme for him. Jason a tad late, no balls, two strikes. Yeah, he tried to pull that pitch right out of Ellis's glove. Still a lot of walks though at Albuquerque, 14 of them in 19 innings. And now 12 walks in the big leagues in 15 plus innings. Ball two strikes. Good eye there by Jason. Close pitch, tough one to take. Two and two. You know, again, he's he has a little trouble with that. Slider to lefties. Fox tracks providing our Sherwin Williams painting the corners. Can't quite make the pitch he wants to lefties compared to trying to run it away from right handers, which is a little odd. Usually, right handers that slider, they want that thing breaking in on lefties, try to break their bats or have them just kind of beat it in the ground. Well, he's in danger of what you see with a lot of young pitchers here. He gets two outs. Walks a guy and now he's got 0 2 Jason Ayer in danger of going 3 2. I remember I, it was one of the things I used to tell young pitchers a lot. I see you get to 0 2 and it's 3 and 2 before you know it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like, you know, you gotta you gotta have a pitch. I I know everybody's been scaring you about giving up a, a base hits with two strikes, but you know, you get back to three and two, you're back in, in the hitter's favor. Get something and go after him. Punto at short has to make the long off balance throw to first and he does in time to retire Jason Hayward. Nice play by Nick Punto wet infield wet baseball and he retires Hayward and the Braves and sends this game to the fourth inning.
Atlanta. A breezy, cool afternoon. Hour and 42 minute rain delay to start. Mike Miner down 2 0 goes to work with Scott Van Slyke in the batter's box. And a strike one. Leadoff walk last inning led to a run, the leadoff walk to um, Carl Crawford. But our always keen and astute producer, Joe Vincius, made a good observation about how Crawford would not have let off that inning had Miner not walked Punto the inning before, which allowed the pitcher to be cleared. Swing and a miss. Two and two for Scott Van Slyke. Well, as much as we talk about walks, you would think there was never a good walk, but there are some good walks, and then there are some terrible mm -hmm. walks. Two outs to your eighth. Eighth place hitter is a, not a good one. Popped up down the right field line. Freddie Freeman gives chase over near the tarp. The win played with that, and he hung with it. Tough play, good play. One out. That had trouble written all over it, didn't it? With the wind blowing. Nice job. Tell you who Ben Slyke reminds me of Jason Worth a little bit. The swing and everything. Worth kind of had that upright swing when he first started with his hands close to his body. All he's got to do is work on that beard a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Jason Worth leading the league in beard. Out of play by Uribe. He's quickly down nothing and two. You talked about his dad earlier, Andy Van Slyke, great, great outfielder. And one of those guys that I think kind of played the outfield like an infielder. Really studied hitters, always in the right position. Sometimes you tend to, in the outfield, not really think about positioning as much because you got so much room to run. Mm -hmm. But Andy was always in the right position. Very good. He sure Excellent. wishes one of his teammates followed that example. Is that's outside to Uribe. Francisco Cabrera hit the change the dynamic of Braves franchise. You might recall. He was telling Barry Bonds to move. Bonds didn't. Sid slid safely. I had not heard that. Yeah, he was trying to get him to trying to bring him to him a little bit, bring him over a little bit, get off the line. And Bonds gave him that old salute, you know, that I'm fine. <laughs> uh, well, not oh. quite. <laughs> Foul past third pace, two balls, two strikes. Well, that's the way Andy played. That's that's the way you got to play outfield. You, you, because you don't get a ball every inning sometimes. Sometimes you go a few innings without getting anything. You can kind of just relax out there. But that's not the way Andy played. Well, it was a smart thought on his part because if a ball is hit down the line, whether it gets past the third baseman or over his head, you're not going to throw anybody out anyway down the line. You've got to go chase it. Sure. So Andy was trying to bring him more toward the gap. Miner strikes out Uribe. And here's that great play in Braves history. See Bonds yep. had to go to his left yep. to get it. And he made a great throw. But he was off the mark just because he had to go because to his he, left. He had to go to his left about 10 feet. You imagine him just coming straight to that ball. Ball would have got there a lot earlier. Thank you very much. Close games, little things mean a lot. Joe made that point today about the Dodgers offense. And that little thing helped win that series for the Braves back in 92. Pirates haven't been the same since. And and minor two quick strikes to Punto. And neither have the Braves in a in the good way. Yeah. <laughs> they haven't been the same since. Before that, we were struggling and we're always in contention now. Good stuff. Ben well, Slyke, by the way. One of the 
thought on Andy was that he's the guy that hit the ball that Otis made the great catch on too when he climbed the wall. That was going to be a go ahead home run in the ninth inning until Otis scaled the wall and brought it back. And Miner strikes out Puto, who didn't think so. Seven strikeouts for Mike Miner through four innings. And the Braves three, four, five hitters go to work down a pair. For the fourth inning, we invite you to celebrate Atlanta's rich diversity with the Braves Heritage Weekend, supported by Belk and Kia. The events include the Champions of Justice panel discussion on Friday, the tribute to the Negro Leagues game between the Braves and Nationals Saturday, and the Tuskegee Airmen and Negro League exhibits all weekend long. Visit Braves.com slash heritage for details. Justin Upton struck out into a double play. That ended the Braves first. Had a good swing right there at the slider. It was almost one of those that first pitch there was almost one of those pitches you had had those pitches where you see it's so good and you're like oh, this pitch is going somewhere and you end up over swinging. I think Justin saw it, it looked like a hanger and I think he just overswung a little bit pulled his head off. He laid off that pitch up in the zone. Two balls and a strike. Despite the fact that he's got all these no decisions, he went six innings, make it six and two thirds against Milwaukee on April 27th, and his last time out, five innings against Miami, gave up three runs. Balls, two strikes. This, I believe, would have been the day that Josh Beckett pitched. Right. So that's the roster the starting slot that McGill is occupying. He's looked good today for the Dodgers. He's allowed one hit. And he just struck out Upton on an outside corner. Punto was rung up on a similar pitch. This time it's Justin's turn to have a seat. One out. Erwin Williams painting the corners. This must have painted a corner. Yeah, good pitch. And at the knees, too.
One out for Freddie Freeman. Beckett DL with a sore shoulder. He was 0 and 5, or is 0 and 5, with a 5.19 ERA. How long is he under contract for? Love of Ellis, two balls and a strike. And the Dodgers don't list the length of the contract remaining for Josh Beckett. Oh, he's had a couple of fastballs. Mm -hmm. well, we talked about him, McGill being effectively wild as you get through the lineup. It's good to be effectively wild when you're ahead of pitcher hitters, but not to get behind him. Yeah, and again, he's been able to get away with some pitches up because he's throwing hard enough to do that. Two balls, two strikes. And Freeman is down swinging. And that was that off speed pitch that he's. A little bit more. So six strikeouts for McGill. Two outs. Brian McCann hits. Brian was the third man to strike out against the Dodger righty today. By the way, Josh Beckett signed through next season. Los Angeles It'll be the last year of a four year sixty eight million dollar deal. As long as he's been around it's hard to believe he's only thirty three. Eight years with the Marlins and of course the Red Sox. A rough it, start to twenty thirteen. Wasn't he the second pick. In the draft he was behind Josh Hamilton. Is that correct? Uh, no, he was the second pick. I'm not sure okay. he was taken ahead of him. And that's low to Brian McCann. Third walk. And the second of the three that's come with two outs. Speaking of two, it's time for Georgia Power Energy tip number two, or BJ Upton, if you're thinking along the lineup. Georgia Power customers can take advantage of Georgia Power's refrigerator recycling program. Free pickup for your second working refrigerator or freezer, plus you get 50 bucks. Hey, Joe, you're right. Beckett was second behind Josh Hamilton in that draft. Hamilton went to the Rays, Beckett to the Marlins. Simmons down a strike. I just remember that there was a huge debate in the Rays front office about which guy they were going to take, and they decided that they needed a position player that would, could, could get to the big leagues quickly. They just didn't foresee all the off field problems that Josh Hamilton would encounter, and Beckett got to the big leagues quickly with Florida. Yeah, I remember the Rays had that kid Rocco Baldelli. Uh huh. Some were calling the next Joe DiMaggio. Right. Not something he thought of, but played with such a grace and elegance. And sadly, his career ended prematurely. And Beckett's turns on this year with the Dodgers. Rays are getting some good hacks at that fastball. Yeah, especially Anderson, who likes that high fastball. Yeah. He's, he's got it by him a couple times. I think Anderson's a little frustrated there. I think I feel like he's had a couple pitches that he wished that he felt like he was going to hit, but McGill has a tendency to get it by guys. McCann is running, and the throw is going to be in time to get Brian McCann. So the Braves had a couple of runners thrown out trying to steal in today's ball game, and that play. Sends this game to inning number five.
much offense. Just four hits combined so far this afternoon. And it's trivia time. Our AT&T U-verse question. Mike Miner, the seventh overall pick in 09. Who holds the record for most wins by a Braves first round draft choice? By a Braves first round draft pick. That's a good question. I don't have a clue, but I'll be interested to know. <laughs> Was Kent Marker a number one pick? I think he was. Adam Wainwright was, wasn't he? I think so. Yep. I wonder if those are just Braves wins. Or is it Major League wins? MLB wins. Okay. Two quick strikes for Matt McGill. And that one popped out of McCann's glove. Tough break. We'll do it again. Phillies came back to beat Cincinnati today 3 2. They beat Aroldis Chapman. The Cincinnati closer. It's two blown saves for him this week. And that spoiled a great start by Homer Bailey for Cincinnati today. Cleveland red hot. They beat Seattle and hung six on Felix Hernandez today. Down on strikes is McGill. That's a new season high for Miner. Eight strikeouts today. Fans, Hip Hop Pioneers Run DMC will perform live at Turner Field post game on Saturday, June 1st, as part of the Braves Summer Concert Series presented by Coca Cola and Delta. Get your tickets to see this legendary group at Braves.com/slash tickets or call. 800 745 3000. There's that group DM. Three might show up too. That would be I just great. invented last night. Like I a like battle of the bands type. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Run DM three. Crawford sprays one toward left. Justin gets there. That ball was sinking toward the corner. And Carl is finally retired. That's out number two. What shoes are you wearing? Those are Nike. So you wouldn't it wouldn't be a, a my Adidas. That's one of the big hits from Run DMC. Is it? Yeah. I didn't know that either. But I was a I was a Nike guy, but for my concert, I'll wear Adidas. You'd say my Nikes. That could be your a medley of your hits. <laughs> Here's Ellis. Ellis is 0 for 2 in his return from an injury. And 0 and 2 is the count to him. Miner set down seven straight. He has struck out eight Dodgers, but trails to zip. Single runs in the first and third for LA. Simmons at short. And Miner is rolling along. That's eight in a row he set down. Simmons will lead off the fifth.
defeated Eric O'Flaherty, who is still holding out a little bit of hope that he won't have to have Tommy John surgery. He said yesterday his stomach hurt, that he's done everything in the past three years to try to stay healthy. I pitched so well in September that we just figured it was fine and, and it was probably an old injury and nothing to really worry about. So even, I mean, even in my opinion, even now, um, I've still been able to get people out and, and throw well. Um, the flexor tendon stuff that showed up, it, it's, you know, it might still be an old injury. It might not be a big deal, but we'll find out more. I'm going to see Dr. Andrews tomorrow and we'll find out more. Broken bat by Simmons. Awkward throw by Punto, who stumbled as he made the play. And Simmons beats it out. Two infield hits for Andrelton. And is Punto all right? Like you said, Dale, when you can smell that hit, you really can get down the line. It seems like faster, but he stubbed his toe or something here. Well, he got his feet tangled up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look, look, yeah, look at him get off balance there. Somehow he got his feet crosswise. After that play, too, fellas, he went right behind the rubber and kicked his cleats in that cleat clearing device. I don't know what you yeah. call that thing. Yeah, the scraper. The scraper, yeah. Uh -huh. Maybe had some mud in his shoes. As uh, Simmons leads from first. And Juan Francisco hits. He's got a a streak he'd like to end here. But let's finish up Eric O'Flaherty. It's well, amazing to see how well he pitched if he had a pre-existing injury for these last couple of sure, years. Sure. Yeah, I thought it was a foregone conclusion that he was going to have to have the surgery, but if there's a, even a glimmer of hope, that's something to hang on to until the examination. Well, he works hard, takes care of himself. I remember Boy. being in the uh, lunchroom in spring training, and he 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 was had his own little Tupperware thing, putting something in the microwave, and I'm like, "What are you eating there?" And it was a very uh, meticulous diet. Mm -hmm. It wasn't the Typical Oreos and chips that I was having for lunch. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, hard worker. Very hard. He he has a real personal regimen that he goes through after every game to stretching, trying to keep his back healthy too and keep his legs stretched out. Always ready to pitch. So Francisco has struck out in his last six at bats and eight times in the last nine. He's behind in the count here. That's the streak I was speaking of. See if he can make some contact and keep yeah. the line moving for the Braves. Turn that streak around. Look out. The bat goes sailing into the seats. And what a catch. Caught that just like like it was a baseball. How do you do that? Hope we can see this again. <laughs> well done, sir. Wow. Well, he's got a Freddie Freeman jersey on. Anybody wears a Freddie Freeman jersey? Can pick it. Even Freddie's fans are good feelers. That's right. One ball, two strikes. New bat for Francisco. A little more pine tar, and we're ready to go. No swing, two and two. They charged uh, Punto an error on yep. that play? Yeah. Yeah, I'm scratching my head a little I, bit on that one, too. I, isn't disagree. that a pretty tough play? <laughs> yeah, I disagree. That wasn't a good call. I mean, you could you could look at the fact that maybe if he throw it makes a good good throw and doesn't bounce it, he gets him. But that's the problem with that play is it's tough to make a good throw. Seven straight and nine of ten strikeouts for Francisco, who's retired, and that's seven for McGill today. Remember, this kid came in with an ERA approaching seven. He is not pitching like that today. I thought it looked like Punto had a little trouble getting the ball out of his glove too, which also causes him to rush. As the rain comes back. No 
to watch and see if he doesn't have a little trouble getting the ball out of, glo of the glove. It causes some of his footwork problems. No, he didn't have a good grip didn't on Didn't have it. a good grip. That's yeah. what it was. Yeah. That was a base hit. Yeah, all the way. Up and away for Ramiro Pena, the Braves' eighth place hitter. He had a comebacker. That was in inning number three. So Pena 0 for 1. Just to belabor the point, I'm not sure how it's worded, but it, isn't it something like. With normal effort, mm -hmm. yeah, that's that, that, that's a great major league play if you make that right there. I think. I'm with you. It reminds me of the Yogi Berra story. You don't hear too often. You hear a lot of them all the time, but this one he came in and a little argument with the official score. Yogi thought he had two hits. He comes to the, to the ballpark the next day, goes up to him, said, I had two hits yesterday. And he goes, no, no, Yogi, I know you did. It was a typographical error. And he goes, it wasn't an error. It was a clean base hit to left. <laughs> <laughs> two balls and a strike. Well, if the minor league numbers of Matt McGill are any indication, the total of strikeouts shouldn't surprise you. In 2010, he struck out 135 men in 126 innings. Last year, 168 strikeouts in 146 innings at Chattanooga. His previous two years, A ball and double A that you're talking about, Chip, he's gone 22 and 13. That is. Guys mentioned one of those great stories you love to hear about a 31st round pick. He wasn't a number one guy, a number two guy. And here he is pitching great ball for the Dodgers today. Pena ground ball right side. Ellis will go to Punto for the force. And that's the second out of the inning. There's some weird stuff going on around the bag at second. I don't know if it's just <laughs> because it's real uh, cakey from the rain. Thought, oh, he just stuck his knee in the ground and didn't slide. Boy, he's lucky that didn't tear something up. But McCann had a funny slide yes, at second, too. That one had to hurt. Anderson's laughing about it. Not a five point <laughs> landing there. <laughs> Ball outside for Miner. One ball, no strikes. Washington's losing as we told you three nothing that game in the third. Dan Heron versus Andrew Kashner for San Diego. Minor with a base hit to left. His first base hit of the year. He didn't want Medlin to get too far ahead of him. Two on, two out. Let's check in with Elizabeth again. Guys, thank you. As Mike Miner gets his first hit, I believe, of the year, and I was talking to Chris Medlin, talking about the hug that he got from Terry Pedalman yesterday when he got a hit. He said there's a little friendly competition or contest going on between Miner and Medlin. And Medlin said, "That's right. After last night, I now have a batting average." <laughs> and so does Miner. And Jordan Schaefer, the hitter, with two on and two out. I was talking to, to Chris Medlin the other day, and he's been a little frustrated. He's having so many games on the road and a few of his starts on the road, he hasn't had, to, had a chance to take as much BP as he'd like either. So he's excited to get home, get a little bit more work in the cage. Boy, was he good last night. Yeah. A little pressure for McGill, and he's thrown two straight out of his zone to Jordan Schaefer. Yeah, outside of uh, Francisco, he's been behind everybody. Yeah, we'll just have to see if that catches up to him. And I would I would guess just the way the bullpen's been going with the Dodgers and what's happened the last few few days here is that he's gonna have give he's gonna be given every chance to get through mm -hmm. any kind of challenges he has. I think Don Madden is probably a little nervous to keep going out there. 
Well, he's had a lot of time in between starts. Again, he's filling in for Beckett. His last start was the tenth, so plenty of rest for him. Eighty-five pitches. Braves batting here in the fifth. Two-zero count. Into shallow center. That's going to get down in front of Kemp. Streaking around and scoring is Pena. And the Braves with some two out magic are on the board. It's a 2 1 score. Well, nice piece of hitting by, by Jordan Schaefer here, but I'll, I'll tell you one thing I've always tried to tell myself as an outfielder when you've got two outs and the ball is in front of you, you've got to be aggressive. I don't know if he's got a chance of catching that ball with a dive, but I think you've got to go hard, go hard, go hard, and try and catch that ball and dive. Because with two outs, you're not going to throw anybody out anyway. And you got the pitcher on first, you got guys backing you up. A lot of, not too much. Too many bad things can happen if you try and dive for that one, but thankfully you didn't. That goes to knowing what you're going to do with the ball if it's hit to you and, and anticipating that before every pitch, Dale, yeah. or an outfielder, knowing your base runners, knowing the outs, and saying to yourself, if it's hit to me, loop, or line drive, whatever, yeah. here's what I'm going to do. Something in front of you, and, and, and as a center fielder, you, you try to remind your left fielder and right fielder. Two outs, I have second. You're not going to throw them out if it's in front of you. Any kind of chance you got to dive for it. And, and and then of course the problem is if it gets by you, but do your best to keep it in front of you. But that's why you back up and shut it. I don't know if he's got a shot at that, but but if he if he busts out as soon as it's hit, as soon as you can read that it's not hit too hard, but we'll take it. Now Hayward with two on and two out, and a strike. It's 0 and one. Jason walked in the first inning and was robbed by Punto to end the Braves third. Back to your point about the, the bullpen, they're hoping that McGill can go a little deeper in the game. And that's JP Howell warming up for their bullpen the last. Three weeks or so has just been awful. Two quick strikes. Here are the ugly numbers for Don Mattingly's Dodger bullpen. Only the Mets have had a higher number. In this series, the Braves have six hits, three homers, and seven runs against the Dodger pen, which has worked three and two thirds innings. And we'll have to wait a bit to see a reliever as McGill strikes out Hayward, and that retires the side. It's the Braves' turn to do something with two outs. Mike Miner's first hit of the season allowed Jordan Schaefer to come up, and Schaefer's hit cuts the Dodger lead in half.
part by Sherwin Williams, by Blimpy, by the Georgia Lottery, and by Toyota. Mike Miner to work in the sixth inning. He's rolling. He set down eight straight Dodgers. The last man to reach is the man in the batter's box. That's Matt Kemp. Who doubled into left field. Jason Crawl Crawford to third. Crawford came home on a sack fly by Adrian Gonzalez. Two years ago, Kemp had a monster year. Hit 324, 39 homers, 126 knocked in. Made a run at the Triple Crown in the National League that year. Missed by one homer of being the fifth ever player with a 40 homer, 40 steal season for the Dodgers. Quite an amazing season. Way off that pace right now. And he hits this one a mile high to right. And Jason Hayward's going to catch it. And, that, out. and that's the pitch right there that, that two years ago he drove into the seats in, in right center field. I think uh, he had. I don't remember the stat, but he had something like 20 home home runs at one point and like 16 were the other way. That's the yeah. pitch right there. He just crushed. It was an unbelievable amount of home runs. I mean, his his spray chart was not only it was predominantly the other way. Usually you see it kind of spread around like Justin Upton. Well, a question for you guys. You both hit homers in the major leagues. Camp's a big home run hitter. Joe had. A many? bunch. Oh, I don't know. Between Dale and I, close to 500. Right. Okay. So, Kemp had left shoulder surgery. Bottom hand for a right hand hitter. What kind of effect, if any, does that have on his power? Well, I think in, unless it's 100%, you always got some kind of thought going through your mind prior to your swing. Just like Brian McCann, that lead shoulder is the one that gets a lot of torque if you check swing or even if you swing. So, it's, a, it's kind of a mind game. Coming back from whatever your lead shoulder is when you're hitting. In Brian's case, he had to cut his swing short, and all he could do was really pull the ball because the top hand became so dominant, he couldn't get the extension with that bottom hand with the lead shoulder. Exactly. When you, we talk about staying inside the ball, when you use that top hand, you it's hard to stay inside. And the reason I ask is it's so surprising to see a player of Matt Kemp's caliber be playing in mid to late May now and have only one home run. Yeah, I don't know what's going on or what the deal is. Maybe he's trying to kind of debulk a little bit, but he does look thinner to me. And I don't know if that relates to his bat speed or power, but he looks thinner. 6'4, 214 is his media guide height and weight. As Gonzalez is down on strikes. That was some good pitching right there, boys. Yes, indeed. Wow. Went up and in on him. He jammed him. He foul ball, and then he goes down and away and strikes out a tough hitter. McCann's Boy, glove good. never moved. <laughs> really good. Nine strikeouts for Miner, extending his season mark. And two quick outs for A.J. Ellis, who's fly to left and has fly to center. Skies are darkening above Turner Field. More rain is on the way. Ryan tried to frame that one and steal a strike. Didn't get it. One ball, no strikes. Big hop for Simmons. 
And that takes care of the Dodgers in the sixth inning. 11 up, 11 down for Mike Miner. Heart of the Braves order coming up. Now it's a one run game. 2 1 to score. you in part by Hyundai, by Georgia Power, by Charbroil, and by AT&T. Two once you score, Braves half of the sixth inning. One of our favorite features every home Sunday is the hometown heroes salute. That's Sergeant Eric Morrow out of Fort Benning. Given a standing ovation by this big crowd at Turner Field in Atlanta. We had Military Appreciation Day already on the homestand. And love to see those shots of our servicemen and women walking through the stands and Me getting too. the handshakes. Me and too. It's wonderful. Pat's on the back, too. Justin Upton starts off things for Atlanta as the rain begins to fall. Need a run. Yep. I wonder if if uh, Freddie and the staff know that it's there's some rain coming. If he might play for one just to try and tie this thing up. That reminds me of a game against the Padres with Dick Williams <laughs> managing. Padres got a lead in the bottom of the fifth and it is pouring. And I don't know who was pitching, but it's it's pouring and and he's just you know Dick Williams saying just throw it, just throw the ball, and the pitcher just got off. Now I said I can't throw. It's the the mounds too oh. <laughs> too wet. Dick Williams was going berserk. He just he just said I don't care, keep throwing. He goes no I I can't throw this. Well time out <laughs> came out and fixed the mound. Oh wow. So it's, it's important to sometimes know the. Weather situation. Uri Bay can't flag that one down at third base. Well, it looked like Justin made the adjustment getting on top of that ball. Like I said, I think I think McGill pushes that ball. It's not like he's throwing 95 or 96, but I think it's hard for the guys to get on top of it. And it looked like he got his, the bat head up above his hands and got on top of one. Man, that's kind of, exactly he's kind right. Of had some pitches to hit, but he just kind of swung through. Well, a quick hook from Don Mattingly. McGill was very impressive. He's gone five plus innings. He's given up a run on four hits, and now the Dodgers have to go down there. You know, their bullpens in play.
did a good job. Allowing just one run on four hits, and that's our Volkswagen pitching performance. The runner at first belongs to him, but right now he's the pitcher of record. He could get his first win. He walks eight strikeouts. That's a career high in strikeouts in only five innings. J.P. Howell. I like to call him J. Howell just because it'd be nice to see J. pitch again. But J.P. Howell, one and zero with a three ERA, came in and faced Freddie Freeman in Game One, got him to pop up. He also retired Chris Johnson with a ground out. J.P. Howell began his big league career with Kansas City. He was a first round pick. And was traded to Tampa Bay in June of 2006. And he faces Freddie Freeman and has him down a strike. In 2008, when Tampa Bay went to the World Series, they had a real bullpen by committee. And that year, Howell was 6 and 1, a 222 ERA. And saved three games. He saved 17 games the next year while with Tampa Bay. Missed all of 2010 with injury, left shoulder surgery. Yeah, the rain really starting to come down now. Murph, how long is the rain supposed to last? Well, just say. I think about 20 minutes. By the way, your app is as accurate as most real weathermen. Swing and a miss, it's nothing in two. Aggravating park now. Oh, that's it. Jerry, Jerry Lane, Lane just pulled the plug. So stoppage at 5.09 Eastern Time. With the Braves batting in the sixth inning. It's already an official game, and the Dodgers lead 2 1. We understand the weather radar shows the bad weather is. All the way back to the Georgia Alabama borders, so we might be at it a while here in Atlanta. So, a second rain delay today as the Braves and Dodgers try to wrap up this series. The grounds crew will get the tarp over the infield as quickly as possible. We'll step aside, take a break, and tell you how we've gotten to this bottom of the sixth inning right after this.
Yankees and Jays were rained out today. That would make it 22 already. Cancellations either of rain or snow so far in 2013. Oh, wow. Crazy. So we are back to baseball. Hitting 0 2 is tough. Coming out of a rain delay, like you said, Joe, tough assignment here. See what Freddie can do. So an hour and 42 minute rain delay before first pitch, and this one was 33 minutes in the Atlanta sixth. Temptation for me during rain delays was always to eat too much. <laughs> it's like, because you know, you get in the middle of the game and you don't notice while you're playing, but you get a little hungry, all of a sudden you got a delay. You gotta be careful on the snacks. Yeah, that's a tough pitch right there to lay off. Yeah, it after was. A delay. That's a pretty good breaking ball. Yeah, it was. Now there is the game within the game. We're all saying the same thing. The Dodgers know the forecast too. I mean, J.P. Howell can take his sweet time out there for L.A. As Freddie awaits a 1-2 pitch. And that's a little low, 2-2. Two two. Well, playing here all those all those years and big games, as, as you guys have seen here, and, and knowing the rain, the forecast, and now with radar so advanced, you got to be a little careful playing that weather game. It always seems to come back and fight you one way or another. Just kind of play the game and see what happens, but it's hard to get out of your mind for sure. But to your point, Chip, it does look like he's taking his time a little bit. Sure is. I mean, I don't. I'm not thinking Justin Upton's going anywhere. He's already thrown over there. Is it the third time? Mm -hmm. Freddie stays alive. It's two and two. Miami won. The Mets won. The Phillies won. The Nationals are losing 4 2. The Braves are down 2 1 in the sixth. Pulled foul past first. We'll do it again. Freddie's trying real hard not to think about the right side of the diamond. He fouled off a pitch to the left a minute ago. That was a pretty good, pretty hittable pitch, but by trying to go inside out, he was only able to foul it off. Same thing there. Kind of jammed himself, but conscious of the outer half. How about this with bad fellows? 0 and 2 after the rain delay, fights off a couple of pitches and now works at full. Yeah, yeah, that's impressive. He missed the target big time there. He was trying to throw a breaking ball away. At least Ellis was set up away, and that came way in. Three balls, two strikes. This is shifting back to Freddie now the advantage because he's seen some pitches. He's had some swings. He's feeling loose. And Hal's got to throw a strike. Oh, we've had wind. We've had rain. How about a little thunder and lightning? <laughs> Good call chip. With Freeman and McCann. Two against J.P. Howell. Fouled off some tough pitches. Wow. Good at bat so far. And that was a fastball. I believe way he kind of bent so. over. It might have been a change. Pitch number 10 of the at bat.
right he's been one of the best Braves hitters against left handed pitching a 297 mark. In higher average than right handers, Chip, you're right. High fly ball down the right field line, but he was out in front. I don't know if JP Howe thought he'd given up a long ball or a gapper, or I mean, one down the line because he was already hustling over to back up third. Already running. He got away with a yes, he did. high curveball there. Sharply hit to second and dropped. Fielder's choice and an E4 is the scoring, and the Braves have two on, nobody out. What a huge break that is. Now that's an error. <laughs> we'll agree on that one. Went off the heel of his glove and then started rolling up his arm. A little bit of a short hop, but he did have it right there. Didn't quite find the handle, but give Freddie some credit for a tough battle right there. Good at bat. A strike to Brian McCann. Andleton Simmons to follow. They've got Belisario in their bullpen ready to go. Gesturing to Joe just a second ago, half in jest, it would be a real unconventional play here. But knowing you got to tie it first before you win it, knowing the forecast, would a bunt be in order for McCann? Well, not now with two strikes, but you're right, a couple of minutes ago or a couple of seconds ago before the count got that way, wouldn't have been a bad move trying to get the game tied before the rain comes. So now it's McCann's turn to have to battle 0 and 2. Four starts in four games for Brian McCann behind the plate. He has struck out and walked today. Justin Upton at second after a single. Freeman at first after the fielder's choice in the error. Wow. That was close. Let's take a look at little Sherwin Williams painting the corners. Just missed. Even count. I'd like to see him throw Brian that slow, high curveball and see what happens. Good looking swing on that fastball. Uh huh. 
They might get him off that fastball, Joe, like you say. Again, the 2 2. There was the breaking ball, and McCann took it for strike three. Well, that swing by that swing by Brian did get him off the fastball. Came with a nice hook. I mean, we're, we're playing in the bottom of the ninth here. I mean, essentially, right. yeah. You're, if the rains are about to really come in and stay for a while, this would be an official game. So. It's imperative you at least tie it or best case scenario take the lead. Simmons has a hit and a questionable error from the plate today. And he pops one up in the shallow center. Out goes Ellis in comes Kemp and Kemp gets there for the second out. So Francisco will be taken back. And it's going to be Evan Gaddis. The cheer you hear is for Evan Gaddis. And Don Mattingly will not allow J.P. Howell to face him. It'll be a righty righty matchup as the Braves go to El Oso Blanco in the raindrops in Atlanta. It is a pinch hitter time for our Yellowwood bringing the lumber. How about the at bat last night, guys? First, he goes over and talks to Justin Upton and Reed Johnson, get a little scouting report on Kenley Jansen, and here's the pitch by pitch at bat. As Jansen got an early strike, that was the only four seamer Evans said he threw him. Everything else was a cutter. Gets ahead in the count, and then the foul ball work begins. And each time Evan feels a little bit like he's getting closer. And then on one inside, he hit it out of the ballpark. That was bringing some big lumber in the eighth inning. Well, the, the little that I've seen Evan get us, you keep challenging him, challenging him, and keep keep, keep that going there. You're eventually going to lose. Belisario also throws hard, mid 90s, with a slider. Give up a couple of unearned runs here in game one. First and second, two outs now. And Gaddis with a mighty cut. Strike one. 
going back to that at bat last night where they told him the inside cutter is the one you want to hit. That was the first pitch. And Evan, mm -hmm. Evan, I remember saying, thinking to himself, man, that might have been the one, but. That was Dusty Baker's theory. You get runners in scoring position, the first pitch might be the best one you see in the at bat. He told me today before the game, he just loves being in this situation. He laid off. One ball, one strike. And he loves the situation. The Braves love the results. Gaddis this year is a pinch hitter. Three for four, two homers, five RBIs. One and two. Target was away, and that ball was like a two seamer coming back to the plate. So strong, and he's got such great bat speed, Dale, that he doesn't have any wasted effort trying to get out there too soon. He trusts his hands to work, stays back nicely. You pointed out that forward press last night, where then he comes back, and he does a good job of staying back. Yeah, and I've seen him fight off some balls inside, hit you know, hit him to right field a little bit. He's he just has good play coverage. He tomahawks this ball left side. Uribe grabs it and flips to second in time. And that'll retire the side. The Braves had two on with nobody out in the sixth, but cannot break through to tie it. 2 1 Dodgers after six. Atlanta, where all your long Braves baseball on Fox Sports South is presented by Academy Sports and Outdoors. The right stuff, the low price every day. A little diamond dry applied to the Atlanta infield as Freddie Gonzalez makes a couple of defensive changes. Chris Johnson checks in for Juan Francisco at third base. Chris will bat ninth. And it's Anthony Barbaro answering the AT&T call to the bullpen. Anthony's had a couple of 
much needed days off. Last worked on the 15th at Arizona, so he's had four good days of rest. And in this smaller bullpen, he's the guy that's kind of designated as the long man. And with the double switch, he, depending on how much the Braves and Dodgers are able to play in this weather, he can go a couple, three innings here. Scott Van Slyke starts the seventh. More good work today by Mike Miners. Six innings, three hits, a couple of runs, and a season high nine strikeouts for Atlanta. But he's on the short end of a 2 1 score at the moment. And Van Slyke fouled that off his foot, and he'll go to a mid catcher crouch. Trying to walk that off. One ball, one strike. Got rid of the bat in a hurry because. This hurt. Right off the top of the or bottom of the shin. Airlines, proud sponsor of the Braves. One ball, one strike for Vance Lyke. 11 straight Dodgers have been retired by Mike Miner. Let's see if Varvaro can keep that string going. Oh, and Vance Lyke, no. two for two. Oh, maybe the same spot. Oh. Bottom of the shin on the first one. Oh, almost exactly the same place. That. That's rough. Wow. Ouch. Dodgers have been a groundbreaking organization in so many ways, as we know in the history of our sport, but also in that. They have the first female head athletic trainer in the history of major professional sports. Their head athletic trainer and physical therapist is Sue Falsone. And Nancy Patterson Flynn is their assistant athletic trainer for the Dodgers. Along with Greg Harrell. I believe that was Nancy Flynn who was attending events like. Mm -hmm. One ball, two strikes. I'd borrow somebody's shin guard now. There's got to be a shin guard in there somewhere. <laughs> Someone's not yeah, using. Right. Because you, you know, Varvaro's thinking, well, I'm throwing a sinker in again. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I would have gone right back there again. Popped up. And Van Slyke is out number one. And never has Van Slyke ever been so happy to get in at bat over with. <laughs> that will bark all the way to Milwaukee. And with the shift in time zones, he'll have an extra hour to feel that mm -hmm. foul ball That's off his foot. Nice. Here's your rebay. He's over two with a couple of strikeouts. Way to pile on, Chip. <laughs> a little low, one ball, no strikes.
to third. Chris Johnson's first chance. Two outs. Base is empty in the top of the seventh inning. Fox Sports South is bringing you the most coverage of the ACC baseball tournament. Don't miss all the action live from Durham. Top team square off for the ACC title. It's the ACC baseball tournament starting Wednesday at 11 a.m. on Fox Sports South. Might want to invest in a little bigger umbrella. That's down the left field line. Long run for Justin, and it's foul. Either that or get a shorter neck or <laughs> maybe ask his wife to maybe go down a little on that lower on the umbrella and hike it up a little bit to, so he could get under it. At least they didn't bring the duck umbrella we saw the other day. Mm -hmm. Remember that thing? That just missed one ball, one strike. Punto can reach the Dodgers will go to their bench. Andre Ethier has grabbed a bat. He's on deck. They have Jansen in the bullpen in case that happens. Off Arvaro's glove, but Pena stays with it and makes the play to retire the side. 14 up, 14 down for the Dodger offense. Now it's time for the Braves' bats to go to work.
a light misting rain continues to fall here at Turner Field. We hope the bad weather will leave us tonight and have beautiful weather tomorrow for the Minnesota Twins. It'll be their first ever trip to Turner Field. Beginning uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, you can take advantage of the Coca-Cola two for thirty dollars Tuesday ticket special and take off early for the Braves business fan special on Wednesday afternoon. Good seats available for the Braves and Twins. Get them at Braves.com/tickets or call 800-745-3000. And our Delta on deck is the Minnesota Twins. They are in last place in the American League Central, but as you see, an 18 and 21 record. They've fallen on some hard times. They've lost four in a row and six out of their last eight. Still have last eight. Still have those two big bats in the middle of their lineup in Maurer and Morneau. They are also nine and nine on the road, so playing good baseball away from Target Field. So we will welcome them for the first time to Turner Field. I did not know it'd be their first time ever here. I didn't either. So interleague play here in Atlanta starting tomorrow night. Enjoyed the chance with the World Baseball Classic to get to see Joe Maurer up close and first we'll see how he goes about his his work and his spring training very impressive routines. Loves the batting tee has a real interesting weighted batting gloves. Huh. I've never seen that before and a lot of guys on the team as well. They go what what do you got there and a lot of guys tried it. Really interesting to see him work. What a swing what a swing. Andre Ethier was on deck. He's now taken over in right field for the Dodgers. As Romero Pena starts things off in the Atlanta seventh. Pena Chris Johnson Jordan Schaefer the trio up down a run. And this is about the time we start hitting home runs 20 20 home runs in the from the seventh inning on which leads the the league or does it lead all baseball first pitch swing Pena to Ethier in right one out leads all of baseball 20 home runs from the seventh inning on that's a lot of fun so and they pick on the bullpens of the yeah. opponents too. Well, as much trouble as the Dodgers pen has had, you wonder if they'll call on Peter Moylan. Remember, the former Brave is with the Dodgers and pitching at Triple A. Peter's pitched in 13 games, 17 innings, ERA over 4-7. Certainly a guy that knows how to get outs and get the ball on the ground when he's right. And we hope Peter can get back to the show real soon. He's one of my favorite guys. Ground ball right side. Gonzalez. Belisario at the bag. Three pitches, two outs. So let's go back to our AT&T U-verse trivia. We've had a couple of hours and a 30-minute rain delay to think about the answer. But I can't remember the question. So wait until it gets on the screen. Most wins. There we go. First round pick. My uh, Braves first round pick. I've uh, come up with another name. Steve Avery, but I don't know if he won more games than Wainwright has won. But I'm going to go with Steve. I, I like Kent Merker. Just he, I just it's the only name I can come up with. <laughs> I was thinking, but I like like I like Kent's length of his career. Was Jason think. Schmidt a number one pick too? I believe he was. Schaefer rolls that one foul. So I'm going to choose either Wainwright or Schmidt, and I'm going to take Wainwright. Nice. And here's the list. Tommy Green. Oh, there you go. Wainwright quickly moving up that list. Tommy Green, the player to be named later in my trade to Philadelphia, and it went up there and threw a no hitter. Did well up there in Philadelphia. He sure did. That was a good hitter's part. 
I know it was the end, near the end of your career, but that was a good place to hit. Yes, it was. Better in the stadium. Yeah. Folks used to say there are a couple of parks in the National League that played downhill. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. That was one of them. Yes. Ball and two strikes for Jordan Schaefer. And hitting on AstroTurf was fun. I have to say, not playing defense was no fun, but love to hit on AstroTurf, especially after a rain delay. That was always fun. <laughs> Ball get through that infield pretty quick. Here's Schaefer again, seeing a lot of pitches. He has struck out, walked. He has the Braves RBI today, and he's worked a full count. And he walks. I'm getting a sense, Joe, that Jordan Schaefer is becoming more and more comfortable with the type of player he needs to be to be on this roster. Couldn't agree more. And every time he starts up to this point, he does something to help the Braves win. Whether it's drawing a, a walk, getting a base hit, hitting a pinch hit homer, uh, which is not, of course not a start. But he does something to help the team win. Good defense. He's a different player. Belisario will be taken down after an inning of relief. Jason Hayward, the hitter, will tell you who the new Dodger pitcher will be after this. With Jordan Schaefer aboard with two outs, and it's a lefty lefty matchup. As Jason Hayward will come to the batter's box, and he will face Paco Rodriguez. Paco also worked in game one and gave up a home run to Justin Upton that happened to be at the time when the bases were loaded. Two thirds of an inning, a hit, two runs. He also walked two batters. And one of those walks was to the man he'll face first, Jason Hayward. That was obviously the critical play in the game. If he doesn't walk, you don't get Dumpton, you don't get the grand slam. So let's see how Hayward fares at his second look at former Florida Gator Paco Rodriguez. Left hander also will make it harder for Jordan Schaefer if Schaefer does want to try to swipe a bag and get into scoring position for the tying run. It's a little harder to do against the lefty. A slow track out there too from all the rain. A 
was a great at bat Jason had against him drawing the walk before Upton's homer a lot of sliders. And one there for a called strike. Hayward gets hit by a pitch. And Don Mattingly is beside himself. Rodriguez walked Hayward with Upton on deck a couple of nights ago. Now Rodriguez hits the left handed hitter and has to face Upton again. Well, you mentioned Joe this at bat the other or here's Justin's at bat. Freddie said that was a, as pretty a swing as he'd seen yeah, right there. Absolutely. And you mentioned Jason's at bat prior to that was really impressive. Played off some tough sliders to set that up. Now he takes one off the leg. And Mattingly will not allow history to repeat itself in this series. They are going through some relief pitchers after taking Matt McGill down. They will have a fourth man stride out of the bullpen. As Justin Upton is the scheduled Atlanta hitter. Two on, two out, two one Dodger lead. It's precarious late in Atlanta. Means Nick Punto is out of the game. Gordon will bat ninth. And Kenley Jansen in for the Dodgers relief corps. He'll hit eighth and face Justin Upton. And it was Justin who gave the scouting report on this guy to Evan Gaddis last night. And Justin two for seven in his career against him. A lot of cutters as he told Evan. And the one you want is the one he throws right at you because it comes back to the inner third of the plate. Had a good cut. Strike one. That rocked AJ Ellis. You remember Justin's last at bat when he, he, he got his hands, bat head up above his hands, got on top of it. There's another swing there. A good pitch to hit. It looks like he's just under it. Again, under it. See if we can make adjustment here with two strikes. Mid 90s with his four seamer. 
Last pitch at 93. Today I found out that Handleton Simmons, who also hit a home run off Jansen last night, played with Jansen in Curacao. And as you pointed out last night, Chip, Jansen was a former catcher. And guess who Simmons' catcher was when he was pitching in Curacao? This guy. No balls, two strikes. And time called. We heard Didi Gregorius. The only time he got to play shortstop was when Simmons pitched. Mm -hmm. So pretty salty middle of the infield, huh? Pitcher, catcher, shortstop. Pretty good. All three of the big leagues. Ellis wants this up. He got it there. One ball, two strikes. Great speed on the base pads. If Upton can split a gap, Hayward might be able to score from first. Very wet track on the infield and the outfield in a steady rain at Turner Field. Now you hit a line drive on the grass, it's going to skip, it's going to hydroplane. Big time. Swing and a miss. And Upton's down on strikes. The Braves again have two on. In the seventh, can't break through. Still 2 1 Dodgers as we head to the eighth. Raining for the moment, and the search continues for the next Fox Sports South girl. If you love rooting for your hometown teams like the Atlanta Braves, you can join Brittany and Kanika here as the newest member of the Fox Sports South girls. Tell us all the reasons why you have just what it takes to be our next fan ambassador. All you have to do is go to foxsportssouth.com slash girls to register now. Gentlemen. Thank you, Elizabeth. There's a look at Luis Avilon. He's the third pitcher of the afternoon for Atlanta. Mike Miner went six innings, allowing two runs on three hits. Anthony Barbaro got him one, two, three in the seventh. Now Avalon has the nine, one, and two hitters coming up. Luis had a good inning in game one of this series. Perfect inning and struck out one of the three he faced. And 
face a fast runner after the double switch in D Gordon imperative to keep him off the bases to maintain this one run deficit. Brave start play today a game and a half in front of the Nationals Washington trying to come back in San Diego losing however to the Padres 7 4 is the score there. Pittsburgh beat Houston 1 0. Cardinals beat Milwaukee 4 2. Rockies beating the Giants 5 0. The Giants had a rough road trip after looking like world beaters against Atlanta at AT&T Park. Yeah, look like world champs. But the defense of the Giants has been offensive. They've committed 12 errors in five games on their road trip. And that's not counting today's play against Colorado. D. Gordon hitting a buck 96. The last Dodger to reach base was Matt Kemp in the third. 14 straight Dodgers have been set down. He was pitching, giving the offense a chance to catch up, but we're running out of outs. Atlanta has six left. Three pitches retire D. Gordon. That was a good sign, too, that hard 93 mile an hour sinker to the left handed hitter for Avalon. Tailing back yeah, into that. Him. Very impressive. Hard sinker in on those lefties. Call Crawford has doubled, walked, flied out, and scored twice. With with D Gordon's average and with the way Avalon throws, I, he showed bunt that second pitch, but I'm kind of surprised he didn't try it a little bit more often because Gordon's struggling a little bit. Avalon's tough on lefties. Had a chance to bring it bring it with him towards first base, but didn't think about it very much, I guess. No. Well, the way this homestand started for Atlanta with the awful news about Eric O'Flaherty and his elbow. Eric is going to go see Dr. Andrews early next week. Something that was talked about the importance of Braves starting pitchers getting the ball deep into the game. Medlin did that last night. Won seven innings. Mike Miner went six and probably could have continued, but the weather interrupted his start. So that takes an awful lot of pressure off your middle relief and gives you, again, with Avalon and Kimbrell, a chance to nail it down if you can get the lead late. What happened last night? Crawford late, two balls, two strikes. Late on a 94 fastball that was in on his hands. This has been a very well attended series. 43,000 here Friday night, 38,000 here last night, 43,118 the paid crowd this afternoon. And a good number of them have hung in with the wet weather. As Crawford hits a little pop towards short. Simmons, what a play, and the scoop at first gets him. Two out. Yet noticed he's pretty good. Yeah, this is just another one of those plays that it is so difficult and makes so easy. You just you're surprised that he that he would not make this play, but a lot of shortstops at the major league level do not make that one, especially with someone running like Crawford. Wow. Most of them would wait and play that yeah. on an easy hop. But he didn't wait with a fast runner, and that's. Why he was able to get Carl at first as Avalon gets ahead of Mark Ellis. Dodgers are happy to have their second baseman back from injury. He was out with a quad problem. Ellis 0 for 3 today. Strike two. Avalon throws harder and his ball moves more than I think most 
Most guys realize that. You know, he's hit, touching mid 90s. Yeah, I think uh, some of the rest that he's gotten, yeah. not working on consecutive days, helps that. Good point. Braves brought him up last year from double A, even though he had been called up to triple A, he didn't pitch there, came straight on to Atlanta. I believe Alex Wood is supposed to pitch tonight too. Two and two with an 0.82 ERA for Mississippi, weather permitting. Assuming they might be having some of the same issues we're having. He's given up four earned runs and 44 innings pitched. No balls, two strikes. The count to Mark Ellis. Bad weather did affect Brandon Beachy today. He was supposed to work up in Gwinnett, but that game was rained out. So Beachy pitched three innings inside a simulated game. And Brandon's next scheduled start will be Friday against Toledo. Imagine how frustrating that must have been for Beachy. You're waiting and waiting mm -hmm. and waiting to get to a game and get rained out. Stayed high to Ellis, ball and two strikes. Chuck is telling me that Alex Wood got the win today. Six innings, gave up three runs. Popped up. Freddie Freeman is called off by Ramiro Pena. And it's 17 up, 17 down for the Dodgers offense. Four, five, and six up for the Braves looking for a game tying run or more. Ponchos are working overtime. A dreary day at Turner Field where the Braves are down a run. Freddie Freeman leads things off. Braves have had some chances the last couple of innings. Their only run came in the fifth. They had two on, nobody out in the sixth. Couldn't push across a tying run. That was with a 
33 minute rain delay at two on two out in the seventh and couldn't score. And that's bounced into the Braves dugout and that might have gotten a piece of somebody sitting on the bench. And they're letting Freddie hear about it. Protects the plate, stays alive. One ball, two strikes. Well, it is indeed cutter after cutter after cutter from Jensen. Yeah, away, away, away. Everything's been away. Tried to backdoor that one. Yeah, see if he's afraid to come in. I wouldn't be afraid to come in on Freddie. I'd be nervous about working everything away. Well, it looks like they're going to try and do something inside. And they pay the price. And didn't come in far enough. Nope. Tying run aboard for the Braves in the eighth with nobody out. Remember his last at bat when he was fighting off pitches away. And that was a pitch where that's where Ellis wanted it was up. But he got it out away from him a little bit where he could yeah. extend his arms. Time for a SunTrust shining moment. The Braves with 12 comeback wins this year. That's second to Pittsburgh's 13. Atlanta tied with the Giants. Hopefully at the start of a, another comeback victory right here. One swing from Brian McCann could put the Braves in front. Sure feels like right man right spot here. Ball one. One for three against him in his career. Two balls, no strikes. I'm assuming the game plan for Don Mattingly is try to get Jansen through this eighth inning with the lead and then bring on Brandon Lee to close it out. I would guess that would be right too, Chip. I, I'm a little surprised they're holding Freddie on with Mac up there. And of course, he represents a tying run. They don't want him to get too big a lead, but I'd want to give Adrian Gonzalez a little room over there to work. And four straight puts McCann at first base. AJ Ellis wanted that call. And in this era of specialization where relief pitchers often work only one inning at a time, especially setup guys, three times this year, Canley Jansen has worked more than one full inning of relief. Remember, he finished off the seventh. He's going to work here in the eighth inning, and he's immediately in trouble. And so Don Mattingly and Rick Honeycutt are thinking. What's our option down in the bullpen if we got to go get Kenley Jansen here? Well, it's funny to hear you say that, that Chip. I know it's been a long time ago, but it just used to be a kind of a common occurrence for relievers to sure. throw two and three. And now to hear hear you say already he's done it three times. Is that what you said? But it's you're right with special specialization in the, the size of the bullpens. It's unusual. And they do have Brandon League ready to go, and looks like he's making a double switch here. The Braves have already brought in. B.J. Upton representing the go ahead run to run for Brian McCann. So changes all over the scorecard this afternoon in Atlanta. 2 1 is your score. Back to Turner Field.
Don Mattingly. Skip Schumacher is into play left field. He's going to bat in the eighth spot for L.A. And it is going to be Brandon League who saved nine of ten games. And frankly, the game might be the eighth inning, not the ninth. Braves have two on, nobody out, and are down a run. Yeah, it's obvious that Don Mattingly will worry about the ninth when he gets to the ninth. Brandon League throws hard. They got him from Seattle. He's in the mid to upper 90s with his fastball, has a split finger pitch and a slider. High ERA, though, not off to a very good start. You would assume Simmons will be bunning here, and the Dodgers are anticipating it, too. Is butting and Simmons got it down. It stays fair and ball dropped. Everybody safe. What a good bunt. It wasn't really well placed, but the rule of thumb to me, I mean, he's playing in the rule of thumb. And I've always felt is if the ball is moving, you don't barehand it. Unless it's a do or die play. I don't I didn't really feel like it was a do or die play. He was in anticipating the bunt. Tried to barehand it. Wet conditions. A sacrifice and an error. And now Gerald Laird comes up for Atlanta. Bases loaded and nobody out. First pitch swing line drive right center field. That's down. The game is tied 2-2. Gerald Laird in the eighth inning. Here's another guy that seems to always come through and do something when he gets an opportunity, whether it's as a starter or today as a pinch hitter, ties the game up. Now the Braves have a lot of possibilities with Pena up there. Infield in for the Dodgers. And Pena smacks one off his foot foul and he hops around. And the rain picks up. Boy. Looked like he got all of it. <laughs> yeah. Hit it on the sweet part of the bat. Ouch. Now Gerald Laird come up and pitch it in that situation. The main thing is keep get the ball elevated, get it to the outfield somewhere. Great job. Wow. This is the guys coming off the bench have been remarkable. What did we say earlier? Run scoring situations, the first pitch might be the best pitch. Lair didn't miss it. And you had a healthy cut on the first pitch. And has fouled two away in a row. And now has to protect 0-2 with nobody out. Fly ball well hit right. Ethier going back on the warning track. Calls it in. Both runners tag and move up in the Braves lead. You put the ball in play and look what happens. Oh, did I mention that Ramiro Pena also seems to do something to help you win when he plays? What a good job by the guys who aren't everyday players today. Pena, Schaefer, Laird, all doing a great job helping. Atlanta now leads 3 2. They now lead 4 2 and maybe by more. Up nope, Laird will stop at third. Chris Johnson also came in as an extra player today. He's got a hit in an RBI. Really nice swing by Chris Johnson as he's demonstrated a lot this year. 
you know, in the NBA, they they give the sixth man award. I don't I don't know what they call it in baseball, but boy, you'd have a tough time figuring out on this team who would be the bench player for the Braves. They they have just continued to contribute day in and day out. Watch the swing, Murph. Watch watch Chris's head. How still his head is on what looked like a fastball. Watch his head. Hardly moved at all. Pretty Stayed right on it. Pretty pretty. Oh. The squeeze might have been on. Laird was breaking toward the plate. Schaefer swung away. Oh my. That's a that's a <laughs> miss by Schaefer. Yeah, that got Gerald Laird's attention. Yeah. Gerald gets his sign directly from the third base coach, usually a verbal sign. Schaefer missed it. That's a big add on run to get. Standing at third base for the Braves, Gerald Lair, Chris Johnson at first. Atlanta with three runs in the eighth inning. Braves have scored 10 runs against the Dodgers bullpen in this series. And what the element of surprise and be good to try it again right here. They do. Schaefer got it down and it's a beauty. Good call, Murph. Schaefer takes advantage of a second chance. <laughs> Big sigh of relief from Schaefer. Well, well played. First time was a surprise, but when you try it two times in an at bat, it really gets you. Especially with a, a, a left handed hitter. This doesn't happen that often. Look oh. out. Jeez. What an inning. A single, a walk, a sacrifice, an error, a single, a sack fly, another single, another sacrifice. Braves have scored four runs on three singles. Well, we get the question a lot with the amount of strikeouts the team has had, sometimes struggling scoring runs. Can the team do this? Can they do that? Play small ball as they like to say, and it's it's fun to see it happen. Do things right, make contact in the right situation, and end up coming with a four spot. And to your point, Dale, in game one, eight runs, nine hits. They only struck out eight times. Last night in that close ball game, three to one, they only had seven hits. They only struck out six times. And today only five, or excuse me. Today they have ten. Because McGill had eight, but they've done a great job of cutting down on him in this series. And they've drawn a ton of walks. That's seven walks earned by the Braves today. And the second of this eighth inning, the first by Brandon League, who has had an awful time of it. Dodger defense hasn't helped either. LA's committed three more errors today. Two on, two out for Justin Upton. Braves send nine men to the plate in a soggy eighth. Again, to, I'm watching to see if Justin can make a little adjustment in that swing. He's been under some balls today. 
getting a little big, a little long. Had that one single where he looked like he really concentrated against McGill to get on top of that ball and see if he can make that adjustment here against Lee. Foul pass third, two balls, two strikes. He's a little out front, but I like I like that swing a little bit better. A little bit better angle of attack. Two balls, two strikes. And the inning is over. The Dodgers bullpen implodes again. They give up four in the eighth inning. Gerald Laird off the bench with an RBI hit. Tied the game. Pena sack fly brings home B.J. Upton. Chris Johnson an RBI hit. And for good measure, Jordan Schaefer a second chance sacrifice punt. Five to Atlanta. We go to the ninth. It's Kimbrell time. Offense. They came alive in the late innings last night, scoring three times in the eighth. Today, the Braves do one run better. They score four times off the Dodger bullpen and now lead 5 2, and they send Craig Kimbrell to the hill. Yeah, it's perfect timing. Two eighth inning rallies where you don't have to worry about anybody doing any kind of setup or how you work your bullpen to get to Kimbrell. You just got to run him out there for one inning after the Braves have taken the lead. He saved three straight games after that blown save in Cincinnati. Last night I thought was as much Craig Kimbrell like as he's been in probably a couple of weeks. He actually absolutely blew him away. Well it's, it seems like and, and we have had a, a number of games where things just are not happening. <laughs> You're just kind of wondering what's going on. Well, their numbers against bullpens are incredible. Their home runs after the seventh inning are incredible. So this is a a seventh, eighth, ninth inning team so far. Well, important two guys. Atlanta hasn't hit a home run today, as you see. Gerald Laird. Atlanta coming into play today had won a grand total of one game all year when they haven't hit the ball out of the ballpark. 
So to make consistent contact, keep the line moving, and send nine men to the plate without hitting a home run, I think really, really important too. Really, really good point. It's good to see them get through that. Win a game, just keeping the ball in the ballpark. Good at bats, good eye. So Kimbrell ready for the ninth inning, and he stares down the last Dodger to reach base in this game. Matt Kemp doubled in the third. Since then, the Braves have retired 17 straight Dodgers. One ball, one strike. For Kemp, then Gonzalez, then A.J. Ellis. One and two. Kemp faced him in game one and grounded out to end the game. It's 0 for 3 lifetime with two strikeouts. That's headed for the upper deck. Kemp will do it again. Tip of the cap to the ground crew today, too, for keeping this field playable with all the rain and drizzle that continues to fall. Swing and a miss by Kemp. Matt did not enjoy his visit to Atlanta. One hit in the series. And one away in the ninth. His breaking ball last night was devastating in his last two strikeouts. And gets Kemp with one. Adrian Gonzalez has both Dodger RBIs. One came in the first inning, one came in the third inning. They got two hits in the first inning. They got one hit in the third from Kemp, a double. It's the last hit they got. And he was the last base runner to reach. 18 straight Dodger hitters have been set down by the Braves today. And Gonzalez, one strike away from being number 19. Right down Broadway, two out. Braves live presented by AT&T will follow this top of the ninth inning, we hope. From that up 5-2. Jerome and Paul Bird will be standing by. We'll hear from Freddie Gonzalez, sound from the clubhouse, and we'll talk more about this great Braves late inning rally today. As Don Mattingly and the Dodgers searching for answers. They're one out away from being swept. You you four crowd. sweeps already this year? Yeah, this uh, they had to salvage today to uh, not go to four. Yeah, I think it was four. Trying to avoid the fourth sweep of the year already. But I'll tell you, Craig Kimbrell is feeling it, as they say. Chip, you mentioned. Uh, the damage the Braves have done to their bullpen all three games that's that's got to eat at the manager of the Dodgers too. He's brought in different guys and each guy got touched up. And you don't have options. You don't have much hope. Right now the Dodgers. Really fighting through a. Rough first month and a half. They started play today seven out of first. The Braves a chance to perhaps pick up a game in the East. 
This game's got all the make markings of someone snapping in that Dodger clubhouse afterwards. <laughs> tough, tough three games. They're off to Milwaukee for a series with the Brewers. We host Minnesota here tomorrow night. Hope you'll make your plans to join us for a three game set Monday night, Tuesday night, Wednesday afternoon. Pretty impressive laying off that fastball like that when you know he's getting back of your mind, he's got that curve. One of the best for good reason. And that ends the streak. First time a Braves pitchers in the stretch since the third inning. They set down 19 straight Dodgers before AJ Ellis walks with two outs in the ninth. He aimed that one. Yeah, you're right, Joe. It's his first walk at home this year. But he was just trying to figure out a way to get this one over and aimed it. Kimbrell struck out Ethier in the ninth inning last night. He struck him out in the ninth inning on Friday. Let's see if he can make it a perfect three for three. Braves aren't going to worry about A.J. Ellis. He was off and running with the pitch. He heads back to first on the foul ball and strike one. Right there, it's nothing and two. Braves concede the base. And again, Kimball one strike away, but with a runner at second, he and Miller will talk over the signs. This crowd, guys. I mean, 43,000 fans paid to see this start. There's a good number of them still left on a miserable day. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. And that ends it. Kimbrell strikes out Ethier, and the Braves come back and sweep the Dodgers. Today's final Atlanta 5, LA 2. Some kind of way to finish off Los Angeles, and we will finish off our telecast right after this.